What's going on, everybody? This is Bryce here with Funnel Driven, uh, the inbound secret. We've got a badass here with us today, Drew B. Wilson, breaking records over at uh, Break Free with Ryan Stuman and the Apex crew, and hence the fuck your excuses hat. And he's got a G code hat that I'm a little jealous about right now. They're coming soon. I'm thinking Don't you need worry. to send me one of those, man. <laughs> We're going to get a so store let's, uh, up let's... real soon. Hell yeah. I didn't get any when I was at MDM. I'm missing out on the G code merch. That's all I'm saying. So, <laughs> let's jump into it. Tell everybody uh, a little bit about you, your story, and how you just came in and just started swinging bombers. Oh, man. Well, uh, yeah. So my name's Drewby Wilson. I live up in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, I'm a sales guy. I'm a dad, husband. I love riding cycles. Uh, so I do a lot of road biking. Uh, but you know, kind of more importantly, uh, I like helping people grow their business and and take themselves to the next level. Um, so a little bit about me, uh, I started my career in sales as a young man. So let me, let me go back at 18. When I graduated high school, I barely graduated. I was kind of a slacker student, fooled around a lot, got through, uh, turned 18 and went and got a job at a nuclear pharmacy. So I was a nuclear pharmacy technician as a young man. So I took radioactive isotopes and I mixed them with chemicals and did one of these and sent them off to hospitals and stuff to use. So I did that for a number. So you were a wizard is what I'm hearing. Yeah, something like that. Um, so I did that for a number of years, but it was a third shift job. And so I was working okay. like 12 at night to 8 in the morning eating like shit, drinking tons and tons of caffeine. I ballooned up to like 315 pounds at one point was like my biggest. And uh, so I I knew I had to get out of there. Right. And so I was at the time big into photography. I ride BMX bikes and stuff. So I was doing, you know, photography for that and thought, well, shit, man, let me, let me go back to school. And so I went back to school and I went for photography and I made it all of about three weeks before I realized it was bullshit, and uh, the kids that I was in class with like couldn't even put a fucking camera together, and I had been shooting. <laughs> I'm like, I don't. I'm a very impatient guy, man. I don't have time to like wait around for things. When I have like a focus and a, a goal, I go after it with everything. It's not one of those things where I can just like wait around. Uh, so I, I I left school. I was a bouncer for a guy that my cousin was dating. He owned a bar and some different stuff. So I was a bouncer for him. And then turns out he also owned a cigar shop. And so he's like, well, yeah, man, if you want to pick up some extra hours, like you can come and sell cigars at the shop for me and whatever. So I'm like, yeah, dude, whatever. I'll take, (laughs) I got to get paid. right?" (laughs) And so I went to the cigar shop and it was awesome. So I started working just doing, you know, basic retail shit, selling cigars and and filling the boxes and all that kind of stuff. But the thing about me is when I get into something like that, I I try to know everything I can about it. So what I did is I went and I started saying, all right, well, you know, if I want to sell more cigars, I need to know what these guys like. So I started trying all the cigars and I started talking with guys and, you know, learning more about the different cigar blends and where they come from and how all that plays into it, you know, cause like not every cigar is the same. It's kind of like fine wine, right? Like all these different things. So what happened is I started chatting with these guys, started getting to know the product and, and started making recommendations. So guys would come in and they'd be like, Hey, you know, I like this $5 stick. What would you recommend for me? And so then I'd go, yeah, try this, try this, try this, try this, try this, try this. Like I'd give them a bunch of options. And after about six months on the job, the guy who owned it came to me and said, listen, man, you're doing a really good job. Uh, I'd like to make you the manager of the shop. But if you want that position, you're going to have to tell Harry. Now, mind you, I'm a 20 year old guy at this point and Harry is 65 and has been managing the cigar shop for 10 years. So, so you're boss, coming in firing some, some old school guys is what I'm I'm doing. firing a guy that's been in charge for 10 plus years. And so, okay. um, <laughs> you know, uh, young Drewby went in there and was like, listen, Harry, I don't, I'm not trying to say so, like, so we're letting you go. I've got to ask, did you go in and break a bat in front of him 
as a power move and then fire him? <laughs> no, uh, I didn't fire him. What I did is I said, all right, Harry, here's the deal, man. Um, Kyle, the guy who owned the shop, he wants me to be in charge and do all the ordering and everything. I certainly don't know everything about this business the way that I should. What I'd like to do would be, you know, I'm going to be in charge, but really I want this to kind of be like a partnership where we help each other because you know a lot about this business, but you don't always want to deal with all the shit that goes along with being the manager. So like, I'll take on that role of dealing with all that shit. If you just help me, you know, make sure I'm doing things the right way. And so I took that shop. When I took it over, they were doing about $350,000 a year in annual sales. And I bumped it up to just over 500,000, uh, which was awesome. Hell yeah. We uh, got voted number one cigar shop in Toledo the year that I took over. And so it was, you know, one of those things where I kind of just fell in love with, with sales and, and, and getting to know that world. Because the cool thing about cigars is it brings people together of all ages and all backgrounds and, you know, financial status. Like we'd have guys in the lounge smoking a cigar that were worth millions of dollars chit-chatting and sharing a good laugh with guys that, you know, live paycheck to paycheck and shouldn't have been in there smoking the cigars they were smoking, but you know, everybody's <laughs> so I learned a lot of interesting stuff about business and life listening to those guys. And so like, you know, really enjoyed that job, but two weeks before Christmas back in, you would have been 2000, maybe 2010, no, not 10, probably 2011, uh, two weeks before Christmas, the owner came in and he's like, listen, man, uh, you've been doing a great job for me and I, I really appreciate <laughs> but I got to let you go. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what do you mean, man? I said, well, you know, I, uh, you just, I'm not making enough money and I'm just, you know, you're not doing things the right way. Like, uh, at the same cigar shop. At the same cigar shop that I, I was running the numbers on. Like I knew I made, I know how much that made dude made and it was well over six figures. Uh, okay. Whatever. So, you know, Hey, I'm like, shit, I guess that's, you know, you got to make a business decision. You got to do what you got to do. So I left there two weeks before Christmas, nothing, you know, at the time I'm a young guy. So I'm still living paycheck to paycheck for the most part. And obviously no one's going to hire anybody two weeks before Christmas. That doesn't make any sense. So kind of just, you know, walked around, tried to figure out what I was going to do. In January, I got a call from a guy who was a customer at the cigar shop. He's like, listen, man, I work, I heard what happened. I work at this furniture store around the way. Like we get busy during tax season, but I, I couldn't keep you on full time. But if you need some you know, money, I know you're a good sales guy. Why don't you come and sell some furniture for us? So I'm like, all right, that sounds cool. I could probably do that. Uh, you know, any opportunity is better than selling cell phones out of the kiosk at Costco or whatever it was that like, I had. <laughs> <laughs> you know, talk to the kid about. And so at the same time, uh, my father-in-law, my wife, who I'm married to, uh, her mother was getting married to this guy who was getting ready to start an Allstate insurance agency. And he's like, yeah, we're not going to be open for a few months, but you know, when we open, I, I definitely want you to come on board with me, whatever. And so this was the same time that I was starting at the, the furniture store. And so that was like, I don't know if that was ever going to work out. So went in the furniture store worked six days a week, sometimes seven, depend, like I worked a couple seven day weeks, ended up doing over $150,000 in sales on furniture for this guy, uh, which was only like a few thousand dollars short of his top guy who had been there doing it for like 10 years. Crazy. You just have a thing of coming in and showing up veteran. That, that's what it is. I smashing numbers, man. I just, <laughs> you know, um, but it, it was crazy because I never like expected that. But, and the guy that I worked for at the store, the owner was like, dude, I would love to keep you, but I can't fire somebody, but I like, I need you, but I can't fire these people. Like whatever. And I went, you know, it's all good, man. Cause the guy who owned the agency actually called me and said, Hey, listen, I need you. We go to training in Cleveland, you know, April 1st or whatever it was, or like two weeks before, cause we're going to open April 1st. So it worked out. So I went to all state. Um, did the training and spent the last six years as an Allstate insurance producer. 
I was doing somewhere between 250 and $300,000 a year in new uh, business premium for the agency. Did pretty well there, um, but just wasn't totally satisfied. Insurance is kind well, of that's, like- uh, Yeah, that's kind of funny because I, uh, I came from insurance and financial services. Long story short, did a plethora of other things, everything from lifeguard to jewelry sales, but in 2014, I opened up a farmer's agency here in my hometown and ran that. Did about 200 to 300 a year in gross annual written premium and ended up getting out of it in 2017. And that's when I decided to go full-time with marketing instead of just part-time, like on the side or weekend or helping everybody. And I was like, you know what? We're going to turn this into like actually a scalable model here because it's what we used to build my agency. I'm I maybe saw one person a month in the office. Everybody else was over the phone or over email or through automation or online. So that's funny that you came from a similar background. Yeah, man. And the thing that got me into like funnels and marketing was that that last year I was watching like, you know, on Facebook and in some of these groups with the insurance agents and there's all these guys that are like, yeah, man, we're crushing it with these landing pages and these funnels and all this stuff. And I'm going, what the hell are these boys talking about? Like, all I'm seeing is that they're getting this <laughs> Facebook, like whatever they're doing, I need to know about it. Cause like I'm stagnant, you know, I'm, I'm cool and I'm doing good, but I'm certainly not where I want to be. And it's funny because there was a group that was like made up of a couple all state agents and a few other guys. And they were, they had this online program <laughs> and they were teaching agents how to build these landing pages and, and generate these leads and all this stuff. And so I reached out to them and I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm interested in the program, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, well, it's $1,500 and this and that and whatever. And at the time I'm like, I don't know, man, 1500 bucks is kind of a lot of money. Like I could do it, but I don't know if that's worth it. Like I've spent thousands of dollars on digital, like on internet leads that didn't do shit. Like I don't know if I want to <laughs> that are absolutely worthless. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So I, I'm like, well, here's the deal, man. I'll pay the money. Like I want to learn how to do this. I know it's worth it. And so I started talking to them and they wouldn't let me in the program. Turns out one of the guys who like started it was an agent one state over and was trying to get his license in Ohio and was like, no, nah, man, we don't want you in the program. Cause you know, we're getting ready to open up in Ohio and like, we, we just can't have you. So I'm like, well, fuck these guys then. But I figure out how to do it. <laughs> Like, <laughs> cause you know, I'm not the one to be stopped in any sense. I, as you, I'm sure know at this point. Um, no, then it was, then they challenged you and you're like, I bet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. bet. okay. I see you boys. And so right around that same time as when uh Stuman came out with phone sites. And so I'm like, all right, well, I think this is a program I need to do this stuff. I mean, what, what do I do? And I started thinking, well, shit, man, all these guys that I talked to that are internet leads said they were trying to ruin a raffle card or a whatever, like, a, you know, this or that. So I started thinking to myself, like, what do I have that I can give away, uh, you know, that's not going to piss anybody off in the insurance world because, you know, there's rules to some of that kind of stuff. But what Our I had journey. was, <clears throat> for sure. Uh, but what we had was these season tickets to the Toledo Mud Hens. So Toledo Mud Hens are a triple-A baseball team. They feed up into the Detroit Tigers. Um, huge following here locally. So we always get season tickets as an agency. So I'm like, well, let me just do a raffle and I'll give away four tickets to the game because it's not going to cost us anything. We already had them anyway. So y'all go to waste every year. So like, let me do a raffle and see if I can get people to sign up. So I built a funnel, set it up, got it in so that it was like, you know, name, phone number, address, email, uh, a couple other little things and then started running the ad. And I started getting leads. I was like, holy shit, this is cool. Like, I'm getting some leads, like, calling these people. They're actually interested. I wasn't quoting all of them, but I was quoting a couple. So I started thinking, all right, well, what can I do uh, that will really push us to the next level? So what I did is I made a long form. I did name, phone number, address, email, what kind of cars they drive, like, all kinds of crazy. Like, it was like 19 questions long. Ran that same raffle funnel and ended up getting over 200 leads in a 30 day stretch for like $2 and 50 cents a lead. So imagine like good long form exclusive insurance, oh, yeah. 50 a piece, you know? Uh, so we spent about 500 bucks on ads. 
I think in that month I ended up writing about thirty thousand dollars in annual premium from those leads. Uh, so it was hell of a turnaround on that. For so a five hundred dollar investment, yeah. For a five hundred dollar investment, you know, and a little bit of time figuring the shit out. Uh, but yeah, so I started doing that and started having some luck with it. Started, you know, kind of doing some things with the agency with that, and then started thinking, well, what else can I do? Maybe I can like sell these leads to mortgage guys or something. So then I built a funnel that was like getting home buyers and I was trading those out to my mortgage partners and my real estate partners and having them send me business. And so basically I did that for a few months to the point where I realized like, shit, I, don't, I, I can make more money doing this than I am selling insurance and I don't have to work nearly as hard. Uh, so <laughs> That right around that time is when uh, Ryan reached out to me and asked me to come on board and help him with the phone site support and, you know, getting that going. And then, you know, he's like, I kind of want you to help with Break Free Academy and some of that stuff. And whirlwind turns into, I quit my job at the insurance agency on February 15th, went full time with uh, Break Free Academy. And then I also own a marketing company called Mobile Funnels. Uh, so I own that with my business partner, Chris, and he and I do some marketing and some stuff. But really, man, I've been... Uh, kind of all in with Break Free Academy and the, the Apex Entourage, which you know all too well. Uh, it's, it's all about helping people, you know, business owners, digital marketers, just anybody that's in a place in their life that wants to go to that next level. Uh, it's, it's been an honor helping people you know, find ways to do that. Well, and I think that's the thing that <clears throat> not only for me, one of the things that I like most about you and getting, getting to know you and becoming friends, but I think that's what attracts so many people to you. Uh, isn't just Ryan and his his following and Apex and all of us being part of that community, which we all love, but everybody that's come in, especially you, and you haven't been there, hell, it's been less than a year that you've been so intricate in it, but you just radiate passion for what you do, and it's blatantly obvious to everybody, whether, whether it's the first time they've met you, like some of the guys that are going to be watching and listening to this, or it be some of us that have been here for a while. Like when we meet you, we know you care. So when you give us a recommendation or like you and me, you introduced me to what PTE is and we started talking and now me and Billy Alt are supposed to be talking about PTE. And it was all based on the fact that when you recommended something, it wasn't because you were just like, Oh, go buy this shit. It was like, dude, you're here. Like this can help you get here. Look at it. And I was like, I right, fair. <laughs> <laughs> bet bet no, that's yeah. the thing man like and, and that's why i love uh the programs and why i'm so passionate about it because at the end of the day there's a lot of people out there selling a lot of fluff and a lot of garbage uh you know and i've gone through some courses out there that i'm like eh, all right cool you know and and there's there's a ton of free content that's the thing man if you look at how much shit Ryan gives away for free. Like people literally have taken his free content and turned it into courses that they sell people for $997. Like yeah. the fact that not only do we have all that kind of content in the background and more, but to me, the true value is the people, man, you know, people like yourself, people like the guys that we met at the phone closer event and all these different places, you know, the network, the kind of powerhouse players that you can get hooked up with that can, you know, you never know what kind of introduction all of a sudden, like <clears throat> perfect example. Well, talking about, yeah, talking about the funnel closer event. I mean, Chase and me have become close friends now and we're actually launching a, a real estate training course here in the next couple of weeks, specifically because of one, our connection that we made and the fact that he's been crushing it with tips and tricks that I've given him, that Ryan's given him, that everybody in Apex has given him. And now it's gotten to the point where we're like, we need to share this with people because I can talk to real estate agents all day running my digital marketing agency, but not everybody. There's something like 1.1 million real estate agents out there active. That's a lot. And they sell an average of 2.3 houses a year. And we're like, they can't afford our service right now, but how else can we help them? So we're launching this new course and I ran through it. We put 13 lesson plans in it. We've got about $8,000 worth of content and value in there. I mean, everything from blueprints to breakdowns to video to structure to pixel install to a walkthrough on how to build landing pages to copy to intent to behavioral data to 
We even give credit to Digital Marketer for, from Ryan Deese for some of his worksheets that we've put in there and link directly to his site because he's got some bomb information over there that we wanted to make sure these people can use. And we're like, the only way we're going to be able to help these people is if we don't care about the return on it. So we're dropping it for 200 bucks. That's it, man. That's just it. And, and that's why I love like hooking up with people, you know, like at the, uh, the MDM event, I had that badass polo shirt on. Uh, that was yep. somebody <laughs> who we met at the uh, social media mastery event. He came and, and learned with us in the, you know, during the event. And he actually brought that polo uh, to me as a gift. He's like, Hey man, I really, I really enjoyed everything. And you know, you've helped me out over time and I wanted to do this for you. Cause I run this, uh, athletic apparel printing company or whatever. And, you know, I just, I thought you would enjoy it. I'm like, That's fucking awesome. It was a badass polo. Like I'm psyched to wear that. Thing. It was a badass polo. <laughs> well, so funny enough, I had it on, right. And I'm walking around the event and one of our other apex members comes up. He's like, Hey man, I really, I really dig your polo. I'm like, yeah, for sure. It's in this thing. Sweet. Like check it out. And he's like, I need to order some stuff like that. Well, Turns out, Jonathan, the guy who uh, made the polo for me, Jonathan Range, he's like walking down the, the hall. So I said, hey, Jonathan, come over here. Introduce him to Chuck. Chuck, hey, this is Jonathan. They chatted for like 15 minutes, and I'm pretty sure Chuck is placing an order with him for some shirts this week. Like, Sweet. that's the power of the network, man. You just hook up with the right person, get into the right situation, and all of a sudden, business is flowing. Yeah, I mean, just from not only was – all, I mean, it, it was, there was so much value at MDM. I've got 25 pages of notes here and probably about five <laughs> gigs worth of photos that I've taken. That oh, I'm man. just going through and making sure we can execute on. And it, it, it's, it's funny when you start looking back at it because, like, you get super hyped up in the event. And you're like, it was awesome. I met a bunch of good people. And I start looking through cards that, like, I was exchanging with people so we could keep in touch. I've got, like, six calls for the rest of the week just from people that I organically networked with and made a connection with there. And we're talking about like, I'm going to be helping a nonprofit. I'm going to be helping a couple real estate guys. I'm going to be sending some stuff over for a salon and all of it was, is just done with, let me help you. And in the event that you need our solutions, you already know where to go. That's it, man. Value, value, value. Uh, that's the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. Oh, I agree, man. I agree. All right. So we've talked about kind of your come up to where you are now. Now give these people a little bit of the juice and tell them how you were, you ran, what was it? 106 this last 30 days? Uh, 103,000 was the final total. Um, 103. 103,000. Definitely the most I've ever sold of anything <laughs> in a month's time. Uh, I sold a lot of furniture, but this, this was top, top <laughs> that for sure. Um, what's the secret? Honestly, man, hard work. Like my schedule is bananas and, and not everybody is going to, they're going to hear this and be like bullshit. But, uh, my alarm goes off at four fifteen every day. I get up, I go, uh, I do like an hour of cardio. Uh, from there I get up and my, the most important thing is I, I have my three year old son and my wife. So four fifteen, I'm up, I go in there, I do my cardio in the basement do that for about an hour, come upstairs, get myself showered, cleaned up. Then I get my son and my wife up because she's a nanny so from like six mm -hmm. to seven thirty or so. That's family time. Have breakfast with my little man, get them going, make sure his teeth are brushed, cleaned up, ready for the day. You know, starting your day the right way with a routine sets the tone for the rest of the afternoon. So we're very structured in our morning routine. Uh, and then man, from seven thirty to six o'clock, I hammer, I work make calls, DMs. I'm on social media. You probably see I'm on, you know, six, seven different Facebook groups I'm posting in. I'm answering <laughs> Like I grind, you know, I, I just try to reach out and I just try to help as many people as I can. Like, could I be charging people for my time and my money? Yeah, probably. And I could probably, you know, be that dick that's like, yeah, it's a hundred dollars to get on my calendar to chat with me. But if I can hop on a call like this, share a little bit of wisdom with some people and it, it brings them value. Like that's huge, you know? So I do calls like this. I try to get myself out there on video and in lives and just provide as much, you know, external value as I can. Uh, so I do that from seven thirty to six pretty much every day. Um, and then like from six to eight, again, I have family time. So my wife comes home with my son, we have dinner. 
I sit down, we give them a bath, you know, read some stories, play Legos, whatever. Uh, from 8 to 8.30, he and I sit down on the couch every night. We watch like a show, you know, Sheriff Kelly's Wild West or whatever, Elmo, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, so we have that time every day, 8 to 8.30. I read him a story, kiss him goodnight, put him in bed. And then from, from like 8.30 to 10.30, I'm back up here working. You know, I'll, sometimes I'll hang out with my wife and watch a movie, but usually – I mean, this last month for sure, I'm just up here grinding. So 8.30 to 10.30, camera went away, answering DMs, sending emails, messages, whatever, uh, doing a lot of live videos. Live videos are killer, man. That gets you out there. People see that. They love, like, the authenticity of, you know, seeing a person, not just a Facebook avatar. So, like, digital marketers, anybody that's watching this, you know, if, if you're not doing live videos, I wasn't about it either. I hate being on camera, but I can promise you since I started doing them, I, my sales are through the roof, man. Like, you just you got to be out there. People got to know who you are before they can like you enough to to trust you and buy from you. Uh, so I do that. You know, every night I hammer away from ten thirty to eleven o'clock. I have an alarm on my phone at ten thirty that tells me to shut everything down, stop work. I go put on um, gratitude affirmations. So like every night I fall asleep listening to this super sensual voice telling me how wonderful I am and how I'm going to be successful and be great. And it's like, it's your voice, it's right? You pre-recorded it. <laughs> Hell no, man. I've got an awful voice. I don't, I don't know why people like me. <laughs> uh, no, man. And it, it sounds so crazy and kooky, but like, I've been doing it consistently for 30 days. You know, every morning I get up, I, I come up with five things I'm grateful for before I start my day. And then I, every night before I go to bed, I track my wins. So like things I've accomplished that I'm happy for, for that day put in my affirmations to remind myself how incredible I am and what I'm capable of and back at it Four fifteen, that alarm goes off every day, man. It's hard. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's living that, uh, living that G code life for sure. G code life, brother. And that's the thing, man. It, if you hit all areas of the G code every day, the, the proof is in the pudding. There's enough of us out there that are living it that can show you, Hey man, here's where we were. Here's where we started the G code. Here's where we're at. And, Fuck, who knows where we're going to end up, man, because the sky's the limit. Well, even for me, like, let's see, I've been doing G-Code since probably FCL, so earlier this year. And uh, it's it's kind of funny because, like, we're going through some stuff right now. I, I had to bring on an attorney. We've got to sue a prior client who's trying to defraud us and defraud American Express. And it's caused this whole situation that's just kind of blown out of proportion. Uh, and I, I can tell you firsthand – a year ago, if this situation was to have come up, I would have been like, fuck, all right, I'm, I'm done. I'm walking away. I'm going to do something else or I'm going to shut down for a few, take a vacation, go get drunk for some reason. And now, like I remember getting the email from my processor and then from Amex telling me that they're trying to defraud us on this. And first thought was, because you start your morning right. You start with that five things that you're grateful for. And then you just go through it and you hit all the G-code measures and make sure that you get your genetics in and your growth in and do what you got to do. And I remember getting that email. I'm like, fuck, all right, I got to find five new clients, five more people we can help. So I don't have to worry about that. And then I've got to contact my attorney and let them handle everything else. Cause if, if I think about it too much, it's just going to bring me down and I don't need that kind of negativity. We got big things coming. So I got to focus on that. And so like every single day, like and it's not, my consistency has to kind of fluctuate with my schedule. So like I just started hitting the gym really hard recently. I used to go only about two to three times a week. Now I'm doing like five to six and I'm sore than a motherfucker today. <laughs> I feel and, you, brother. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm beat up, man. Uh, like I almost fell down yesterday, getting out of bed, did legs the other day and beat the crap out of them. <laughs> so now I'm going and, the consistency thing's interesting because when you think about it, you're like, oh, it's just repetition. No, it's not just repetition. It's, it like reframes everything that you're thinking about and how you react to something. And then you get into this pattern where like, if you don't do it, you start feeling bad about it. Like that voice in your head is like, get up. You got to go do it. You got to do the, you got to do the five things you're grateful for. You got to end on a win. You got to make sure you hit the gym. You got to make sure that you're reaching out and helping people and, like, like you said, video is, 
I'm not the most comfortable person on video, if you can't tell. Uh, and that's why in most of my videos, I announce, hey, this is going to be a raw video. So, <clears throat> like, if I stumble up or if I say something weird, like, just roll with it. it <laughs> I can't re-record it. It's raw. It's just how it's going to be. And so I launched those up. And, like, even just from last week, I've seen a huge influx of just organic followings and people reaching out and just asking for help and tips and tricks. And we still have the normal growing pains going on from prior clients or existing clients or what we were already doing. But just that alone has been like, shit, why haven't I been doing this every day? <laughs> so it's funny because I actually just had a call with somebody earlier. Um, you know, because all of this, like, it, that's been happening to me, man, is, is such a whirlwind. Like, I, I'm still, like, pinching myself every day trying to make sure it's real. Like, working with Ryan and, and, and setting these goals and, and, and crushing these goals, you know. It, it's all very new to me. But what I was telling the young man that I spoke with earlier was it's, it's like this. You know, you guys see me and, and you don't know me that well. So, like, what you, the, the jumps that you've seen, and you've seen it because you watched me back at, like, you know, long closer. So, you've seen mm -hmm. a lot. But, like, people that are looking from the outside, they're just like, oh, well, like, who's this kid? How did he get to this point? Like, how did this even happen? Uh, but what, what it is, man, is it, is it is that repetition, you know, a little bit better every day. You know, it's like a diet. So, like, if I'm, if I'm on a diet and I'm eating good and I'm doing the right thing, you know, 14 days in, 21 days in, you're like, man, this is bullshit. This ain't working. I'm not noticing any difference. Like, I don't – man, I'm not losing any weight, whatever. Uh, you know, I'm going to do this for one more week and then I'm done. Like, I'm not doing this shit no more. But then you go out, like, you know, and you see some, some girls that you haven't seen in a while. And uh, then they're, they're looking at you and they're like, oh, man, you must, you know, you're looking good or whatever. And all of a sudden, what you don't realize is, like, the little bit of gains and the, the little bit that you're getting better every single day doesn't stand out. But then when somebody who hasn't seen it for a while looks in, they're like, oh, shit, like, you're on it. Like, you're you know, you're doing good. You're looking good. You've lost weight or like you're getting gains, man. You're getting ripped. Like that's the difference is when you're in it every single day, you don't notice how far you're going. What happens is like these nominal increases, people like they don't recognize them. And so they give up. They're like, oh, well, I'm not seeing it. You know, as far as I like, I didn't hit every single goal or I didn't lose 50 pounds in however long, or I didn't make however much money. So they kind of like give up on it. But the thing is, you have to stay consistent. You have to keep showing up and doing the shit every single day because what happens is it, like, compounds, right? Like do a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. All of a sudden, you know, you look back from a third-party perspective and you're way, way ahead of where you ever thought. <laughs> but it's just because you kept showing up and doing the work. Yeah, I can't agree more, man. I mean, hell, even even on like slow days, like today, I've got a pretty open schedule. So I'm doing a bunch of these and I'm, I'm getting everything set up and transcribing some stuff and building up some content because I don't have a whole lot of sales meetings. I knocked them out this morning. <clears throat> nice. And most of them are going to be follow-ups for, I think we've got two or three people coming on sometime next month. And we've got about two or three people in finance right now with Jonathan and his team. And just doing that, like I could have easily just been like, well, fuck it. I've got an open schedule. Let's just relax for the rest of the day. But now I'm here. I'm like, well, how do we, how do we make sure that even if I am just on my couch or sitting at my desk, how am I being productive with some of it? And this stuff, even though it's not going to, I can't go deposit this in my bank account, but I know it's going to provide value to the hundreds or thousands of people that are going to be able to see it. And then they're going to be able to reach out if somebody wants to join Apex or they want to know more about Stuman's program or whatever, they're going to know exactly who you are. And if somebody needs a web dev done or they need some copywriting or some coaching or they need some digital marketing, they're going to know who I am. So they're going to be able to reach out and be like, all right, these guys know what they're doing. They keep, pu they keep pumping out and providing value to everybody. Let's see what they're about. And that's important, man. And that's, that's what I keep trying to tell everybody and, and what I hope the listeners of this uh, get out of it is it's truly about what you can give back to everybody else, you know, um, providing value, solving problems, you know, giving solutions. That's what really makes money. It's not about being the best salesperson. It's not about having the fanciest widget or whatever. Like what can you do that solves the problem 
of the person you're chatting with. Because if you can solve a problem, you can get paid. And the bigger the problem that you solve, the more you're going to get paid for it. That's for sure. And, and earlier I mentioned that me and Chase are coming out with that new course. And it's actually our first paid course that we're going to be launching. But over the process since, hell, since about FCL, I've built out four free courses. I've built out the Closer Academy to teach sales closers. I've built out the Appointment Setter Academy to teach you how to hire and then train phone appointment setters that are like stay-at-home moms so you can help that community that otherwise couldn't work earn 15 to 30 bucks an hour while they're setting appointments for you. Created a, a short little mindset one. And then the first one that we launched is called what's hurting your growth. And it's, it's three days short and simple. And it's just, you need to self reflect to find out what it is. And it's the same stuff that I did after SDL where I'm like, Oh fuck, I need to fix that. And then when you fix it, you're just like, Oh no way that actually worked. Let's get back on to doing what we're trying to do. Yeah, man, that's just it. It's, it's all about implementation and taking action. Like there's a lot of people out there that will talk a big game and will do, you know, talk about this and that and what have you. I promise you, I'm not special. I'm just a dude that shows up and does the work and like, you know, it, there's I'm, no secrets. I don't there. know, man. I'm, I'm thinking you're a secret ninja ever since MDM. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Oh man, it's so funny because like I really, it, it, Brandon the Gazaway. Shout out to Brandon Gazaway, who's a badass. Uh, Rip Nutrition. He um, early in the event, like in the day, he's like, "Hey man, you're gonna come up later and break a bat on stage, right?" And I'm like, "What?" And he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> and so I get to thinking to myself, "All right, well, there's no way he's gonna bring me on stage and have me look like an asshole." Like, there's got to be a technique. Right? <laughs> there's going to be some court of, like, sure, it's, it's one of those things. So when he finally called people to you didn't even there, You didn't even follow the technique, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You just came out and made a whole new technique. <laughs> well, so again, I'm like, all right, here's my thought. If, if it's a stick – and it's a bigger stick, and I know I need to break it, I'm going to put it, like, so it's barely holding the ends, and I'm going to break it right in the middle, right? So I'm like, all right, mm -hmm. baseball bat, hold it on both ends, look for where the wood shaves over, because that's, in theory, you know, layers, so that's where it's going to split, right? And just crack that some bitch as hard as you can over the thick of your knee so you don't break your kneecap. That's all I figured, like, if you, as long as you hit it right in the right spot, it'll break no problem. Apparently, that was not the scientific method that Brandon had planned to give us. Uh, <laughs> because he's like, yeah, I've never seen anybody do that shit. Like, you know, baseball players and whatever do it, but, like, not just some random-ass dude in the crowd. <laughs> and, yeah, so that was cool. Did that, snapped that bad boy right in half over my knee. Uh, and then he handed me that pan. So the thing to me that was really interesting was the pan. Like, I was like, oh, so here's where he makes me look like a dick. You know, he hands me this little <laughs> Teflon. Man. He's like, yeah, here you go, man. Roll this up like a burrito. And I'm like, oh, shit. But then he's like, no, the secret is just roll it like a T-shirt. Oh, like a T-shirt? Okay. Wouldn't you know, man, all I did was give it that one motion and rolled up like a little Teflon burrito. So, yeah, I did some cool shit at MDM. People will remember me, I think. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember after when we were at the mixer, you come up and you're looking all snazzy. You got all dressed up. I'm like, what are you doing trying to impress people? And you're like, I'm just trying to look good. And I'm like, you rolled a pan. You could have shown up in a banana hammock. Nobody would have said shit. <laughs> <laughs> I might have got some even more uh, excitement if I showed up in a banana hammock after that. That's true. You might have. You never know. <laughs> Had a little crowd just around you, you know. <laughs> No, man, but that's just uh, – that was the energy in the room. Like, so many people in there, so much just, like, energy going on. I couldn't have done that with, if I'd have been just, like, hanging out with my buddies. You know, like, I mm -hmm. – that's the power of being in a, a group with that many people of that sort of caliber. Like, I mean, people in that room were there to take themselves to that next level, and I was able to channel that energy. So, that's, that's why it's important. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Well, and I think it's important to point out because like, and, and you're around my age group. So <clears throat> I think it's important for everybody that may be watching or listening to this, that kind of feel that they're in that young entrepreneur or solopreneur area. And they're trying to figure out like what their life's about and how they want to be able to help people. Uh, it sounds cheesy on the front to, to like network and join a community and, and buy into this seminar and drink the Kool-Aid and all that. It sounds cheesy. It really it does. does. It sounds corny as hell, but there's no way I'd be here today without it. I mean, even just FCL, which was the first thing that I bought into back into uh, what 2017, <clears throat> just from that. And I already, I had studied marketing in college and college was a waste of fucking time. <laughs> it was fun, but I mean, I didn't it has particularly purpose, learn any actionable information. Yeah, it is what it is. And so I bought into that and like I had already been executing on a lot of this stuff for my insurance agency and for friends and family. And then I bought into that and I was like, all right, let's see what this is about. And I go into it and just from that one decision, just getting introduced into the network long before I became a lifer with Apex and decided to do, to do life with y'all and long before the conversation that we just started developing about PTE and doing the prosperity thing with Marshall Silver, long before any of that was even a thought, I was able to take four months off that year because I wasn't in the right headspace. I had some personal tragedy happen. I was able to still take four months basically off and still be able to continue the growth and help people. Uh, and, and personally, on a personal side, I was able to afford to do that that I never would have been able to do at the insurance agency or any, any position before that. It just wasn't possible. Yeah, man, it's important to recognize that sometimes you kind of got to like step back and reevaluate. Um, you know, we all fall into these ruts and the, this like thought pattern from the people around us that are like, no, man, don't, don't think outside the box. Don't, don't, don't be outside of normal. Like just do what you're supposed to do and get your paycheck and be happy that, you know, you don't live in the <laughs> gutters. And it's like, yeah, man, that's cool. And like, I'm all for people that are happy, you know, making what they're making. Shit. If you're making 25 grand a year and you're, you're happy with your life, good on you. Like that's kick ass. But if you're making 25 grand and you're not happy, there's only one thing to do and it's take action, you know, get off your ass, yeah. do something, if you don't want to pay to join a network because you think it's cheesy, like, that's fair. I felt the same freaking way. You know what I did do, though? Like, I read a couple of books. I at least listened to some of the shit they said and, like, you know, listened to a podcast or two and, and was like, all right. Yeah, I kind of get it. I do kind of have a shit attitude sometimes. Like, maybe if I was a little more positive about things and didn't dwell on all the stupid shit, I might get more things accomplished. And it – Yeah. Again. I'm a young man at, at that time, and it's, it's hard to tell somebody that's, you know, 20, 25, that's doing, you know, whatever in life and thinks they know everything. Like, I promise you, you don't. I don't know. It. Like, the best thing that ever happened to me was realizing, like, I don't even know what I don't know. There's just so much. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it's funny because, like, we position ourselves <laughs> with, like, the network and the information and, and the value that we can we can position like I know you know a ton of shit I don't know I, I probably know a ton of shit you don't know and it's, it's what differentiates us but I have clients and prospects talk all the time and I'll talk about what I'm an expert in and if they ask a question like can you guys do this or like what do you think about this like if I know an answer I'll give it but more often than not I'm like look I'm not I'm not the only one here that's going to be doing this when you come on and you join our family you get the benefit of our entire team, our, our network of professionals here. Cause I don't know everything. Like I can't, I can't tell you I'm an expert in e-com, but I've got guys on team that are, I can't tell you I'm an expert in clothing, but I've got guys on the team that are. And that's really what's going to be the biggest thing. Cause hell, even with financing, like I'm not a financing genius over here, but I know Jonathan and his team are going to be rock stars for whoever I need to send them to, you know? Yeah, for sure. Can you still hear me? My headphones just died, so hopefully my laptop doesn't sound terrible. No, I can still hear you. You're good, boss. Right on. Cool. Um, yeah, man, and that's the thing, like, and that's why I am so adamant and when I'm talking to people about things that the network really does make a difference. And, and that's, to me, 
I'm like you, man. I'm not an expert in anything. Like, <laughs> I know enough to be dangerous about a lot of different stuff. And, and thankfully, I've been in enough different industries and, and positioned in enough places that I've learned a thing or two about a thing or two. Um, but I'm like you. If I don't know the answer, I'm going to be straight up and say, yeah, man, I don't know for sure. But nine times out of ten, I do know somebody that is an expert or that I can turn to and trust that they're going to shoot me straight with the answers. So yeah. people appreciate that. They're like, oh, well, he didn't just shoot me a line of bullshit and then, like, just figure something out. He was like, no, let me make sure I get this done the right way. And, I mean, that's – it makes a difference. People want to know that you are being honest with them and that you're giving them every opportunity to, you know, grow and, and be honest back with you. Well, and I think that's one of my favorite things, and I think it was Sean Whalen that said it at MDM when he was on stage, was be real, be be raw, be relevant. And it's, I mean, it's true. Like, we've become, just as society, we've become so beaten down by the 3,500 or so ads and pitches that we see every day that when we see something polished or we see something that seems too good to be true or we see somebody just go in for the kill or whatever it may be, we just ignore it. We just go right past it on whatever it is. And then when we see something like this where it's two young guys or two older gentlemen or two badass women business owners or whoever it may be that are just out there providing value and trying to help people, we're like, oh, shit, like maybe this, maybe there is something to this. Absolutely, man. And that's, that's why I was so excited that you wanted to have me on here, like, it's freaking incredible. I really appreciate it. Like, again, I'm not, I'm not special, man. I'm just a guy who shows up and does the work. And I think anybody that's listening to this now or in the future, that the biggest piece of advice I can give you is just to believe in yourself and, and speak your beliefs into existence, you know, because you can dream it, you can think about it, you can talk about it, but unless you take action to really like put it into play, it's never going to happen. And the thing is, you don't have to run a marathon overnight. You know, small steps are what's going to get you to that mm -hmm. final destination. Like everybody thinks you got to sprint to the finish line, but this isn't a freaking you know, a short race. This is long-term life. Isn't like just over tomorrow. And if it is, you know, having blessed, whatever, but like make sure you're living your life to the best ability that you can today. Because again, this is a long game and you want to be here for the long haul. But if you were to go tomorrow, know that you're giving your everything that you have to get to that most elite version of yourself. Because how sad would it be to, to pass away? And, and, you know, I'm not a religious guy, but get to somewhere and find out that you were only given like 30% of what you were truly capable of. Like that would suck pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think to add to that, like I'm a, I'm not a religious guy myself either, but I am a big believer in, trying to make sure that you can go above and beyond what, what you believe you're capable of for that continued growth. And, and the biggest reason of that is I never want to have a situation, whether I die young or I die old, I don't want to have a situation where I regret anything that I've done. I may have made mistakes, but as long as I made those mistakes with the right intention or I was able to, to fix what wrong I did, I know I'm not going to have a regret later on in the road. I'm not going to get to retirement age or, or end up getting sick or end up starting passing away and then be like, fuck, if I only would have done this, that's what I'm trying to avoid. The if I only is a nasty one, man. You don't want those. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those are going to hurt you a lot more than, than if you go out and you fail. I mean, this, I've got, this is what my third company that I've started. I'm only 26 and like I've had friends, I've had family, I've had colleagues, I've had associates, I've had prior uh, co-workers that are all like, you're fucking crazy. What are you doing? Just leaving work, starting your own thing. I'm like, yeah, but worst case scenario, I fail. Everybody's already looking for employees. That isn't going to change. But what if this works? Hey, guess what? I can still sell insurance. If I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> I can sell my $250,000 a year in premium. And I know I can do that. What else is out there? What else can I do? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I'm not looking for a fallback. I'm looking for, I'm looking to help as many people as I can make an impact and then, and then do what I can for not only myself and, and my future family and the family that I've got now, but really why not? 
I mean, why not? <laughs> yeah, man, that's, that's my thing too. Like, uh, my mom was a single mom. She had, you know, I have two brothers, so she had a single mom of three boys. Uh, she struggled. My dad was a piece of work in and out our whole lives. Like I'm setting my son up to not only have the opportunities that I was never able to have in, in my life as a kid. And, and, you know, God love my mom. She worked her ass off to take care of us and do what she did for us. And I totally, you know, appreciate that. But I know there's a lot of things in my life that I wish I could have had. Um, that I want to know my son will have every opportunity to have, but also to see what it takes to, to be afforded those opportunities, right? Because he's not going to just be like some shit that's given everything in life. He's going to have a good life, but he's going to see what it takes to get there and, and how that operation and those procedures are put into play to make that happen. You know, because I can, what's the phrase you can, uh, give a man a fish and they'll eat for a day or teach a man to fish and they'll eat for life. Like I want to be able to give my son the keys to the lake with all the big fish in it, but also let him know, here's how you go out and catch those fish because you've got the lake. You can live forever now, but you need to know how to take care of it. And do along with that. Yeah. And that's important. Man. There's, and, and I don't mean to offend anybody on here, but like I mentioned earlier, this is a raw recording. So I'm, I'm a big fan of making sure that there's that character development and, and I myself have made more mistakes in my young life than any grown adult should have ever had to have done. Uh, and I mean some dumb shit. Like I got shot at the first time when I was 13 because I was making poor decisions. Okay? <laughs> and so I grew up rough and one of the biggest things and one of my biggest motivating factors is I want to make sure that I can repay my dad for everything that he's done for me. Cause without him, I wouldn't be where I am today. I would have gone down that completely different dark alley and just been a shit show. And because of him and because of the rest of my family and everything they did, and they worked their ass off to make sure that me as an adolescent got out of that mentality. I am where I am today and I can help these people. And that's why Ryan's little statement of I'm a prolific mistake maker really resonates with me because I'm like, fuck, I'm not the only one that made dumb decisions my whole life. <laughs> yeah. So you get to know these people and then you're like, all right, I, I can back it. I can back it. And that really pushes you to, to help people that may be where you were, or where you are, get out of it. And for me, like I've got friends that are still going out and they want to go downtown and get fucked up every single day and go party. And if that's what they want to do and they're happy with it, power to you, just be safe. But then they complain about this or that or not being able to, to fund the lifestyle they want. And I'm like, then, then change it. Like, <laughs> like make the conscious decision. If, if you're not happy here, go here, you know? So I'm real glad you brought that up. I also want to thank you for, for agreeing to come on to this. I think it's going to be, very helpful to everybody here listening and watching for hell years to come. I'm not taking it down. It's just going to be posted up and live. Uh, and then I kind of want to wrap up and make sure, cause I know you're a busy guy and I don't want to take up too much of your time. What, uh, what last little bits of gold nuggets do you want to leave these wonderful people and then give them some information on how to contact you and, and reach out if they want to join apex or if they want to take a look at any of the BFA stuff so that they know where to, where to go to find you. Yeah, right on, man. I appreciate that. And, you know, I, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, this is huge. It means a lot that, you know, you would feel uh, comfortable having me on to chat with your audience. And, you know, it, like you said, it's power moves, man. Uh, it's going to bring a lot of value to people over the years. So if I had any last bits of wisdom or advice, gold nuggets, um, it's, it's develop a routine. Make sure that you have your entire day planned out I mean, and it doesn't have to be like to the minute. I know there's guys that are out there that are like that, but just sit down and say, all right, man, what's, what's important in my day? What do I know that I need to do every single day? And if I hit all of these checks throughout the day, I know I've accomplished enough that I'm going to be moving forward every single day. Uh, so set yourself up with a schedule and a routine, you know, live and die by your calendar. Like you said, I, this call was booked in for a specific time because I know when we get off here, I've got 10 minutes to, take a piss, do whatever I got to do and get prepped for my next call. And so, you know, if you're living by a calendar and you're sticking to it and, and putting those goals and those tasks inside that calendar and getting them accomplished, that's going to be huge, huge, huge for people. Uh, so, you know, build that routine and get used to it because 
the better you stick to your routine, the more you'll find that you're getting things accomplished. And going back to what we talked about, you know, small accomplishments every day, you know, one brick a day builds a house over a lifetime. So kind of stick with that mindset and that mentality. If people want to know more, um, you know, about my story or want to chat with me, uh, they can go to drewbywilson.com. So D-R-E-W-B-I-E, Wilson, W-I-L-S-O-N.com. Uh, they can schedule a call with me. I'll be happy to chat with them. If they need to know more about the, you know, Break Free Academy Entourage, uh, they can find me on Facebook at Drew B. Wilson, Instagram at Drew B. Rides. Just reach out, man. I'd be happy if, if there's anything I can even just chat with and, you know, maybe share my story. Just l- allow people to see what's truly possible when they choose to live life by the G code and, and take it to that next level. Um, I mean, that's all it takes, man. A little bit of hard work and dedication. Hell yeah. Well, thanks again, man. I, I really appreciate you coming on and, and talking to my audience and showing them kind of what's possible when you live that G code life. I do want some of that merch though. So you're going to have to let me know when that store opens or when some stuff comes available. Cause I'm jealous about that. hat. I like it. Oh yeah, brother. You know, uh, other than, sure, yeah. <laughs> sounds good, man. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this up here real quick uh, for everybody here at the inbound secret that's watched and listened, go ahead, like comment and share this with anybody that you think is going to have any type of benefit from listening to this. If, if they're looking for mind rewires, if they're looking for, just some motivation. If they're looking to see what's actually possible and, and me and Drewby here aren't millionaires yet, but we're, we're actively every day trying to go after that. And that's the same thing we want you guys to do. So you can check us out. Uh, you can get access to our free courses at the inbound secret.com. Follow uh, myself, Bryce Vance uh, on Facebook or on Instagram, same thing. And then make sure you guys reach out to Drewby here. He's got some killer stuff. Listen to his story. Uh, and then if any of you want to do life with us, make sure that you hit them up and ask about Apex and Entourage and we'll see you on the inside.